Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin Galetz, and I'm an industry education coordinator with uh, Regina District Industry Education Council and SunWest School Division. And today, it's my pleasure to introduce a former student of mine, and uh, she was on my volleyball team for a number of years as well, uh, Joelle Pollard. Uh, she's a quality manager at Labatt's Brewery in Edmonton. Uh, she's a graduate of Rosetown Central High School, like I mentioned, and she's going to describe the work she does and the, and the path she took to get to this position. Just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear in the RDIEC YouTube channel for you to view or others to view in the future. I uh, would like to request that any students who watch this session go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that's found at the top of the homepage. And it gets your name in on a, a monthly draw for a $50 gift certificate. And uh, the survey results just help us with feedback uh, for how we can improve our, our services in the future. So again, the, the website is www.rdiec.ca. And uh, I'll turn this over to Joelle. Welcome, Joelle. Great. Thank you, Kevin. And thanks for the opportunity to speak to the, everyone today. Um, so I will kind of just get into it here for my role at the quality manager um, at the Edmonton Brewery. I have been here for 20, almost 25 years. I'm in my 20th year. Um, and always at the Edmonton Brewery. Move along here and just some information about the Edmonton Brewery. So it opened in 1964 as part of the Labatt family of breweries to produce Labatt Blue and Labatt 50 Ale for distribution in Alberta. Uh, now it's become part of AB InBev, and it has expanded to produce beer and beverages for distribution almost across Canada. Um, the facility brews over 1.7 million hectoliters of beer annually and packages 24 different brands on a bottle line, a can line, and a keg line. And there are approximately 165 employees working at the brewery. So a little bit about what I do here at the brewery. This is kind of... Um, an overview um, as a quality manager for the brewery. Obviously, I'm the leader um, for quality, ensuring quality standards and compliance to quality specifications. Also some legal uh, specifications as well. Um, enforce and promote a safe work practices. Uh, developing, monitoring and maintaining critical control points to ensure excellent process and product quality by performing studies and statistical analysis. Uh, work with many other departments um, and coordinating quality related activities within those departments. Um, I have a saying here that it's um, quality is not just a department, it's how we make our beer. Um, so it is a part of every department. Um, facilitate corrective actions for improving quality systems. Um, that could be on hold product, process trends, consumer feedback, um, all of those areas. Um, co coaching salaried employees on their roles and responsibility, as well as developing employees. Um, and so I have uh, seven direct reports uh, that are under me as well, so in various roles. Um, ensuring compliance to company audit programs, so manufacturing practices, hazard analysis, critical control points, so it's our HACCP standards, maintenance, food safety, um, any kind of quality uh, program that we would have, as well as audits uh, required by external parties. So if the CFIA were um, to come in here, I would be the lead um, in dealing with, with their audit. Um, also deliver uh, superior quality through continuous improvement on quality systems. So we're constantly um, looking at ways to improve quality, whether it be through instrumentation or just improve checks, um, that kind of thing. So obviously for skills and traits, um, as with many uh, leadership roles in management, so strong leadership skills, uh, team player, the ability to build solid relationships at any level within the organization and without, like I said, I deal with uh, outside organizations as well. Um, strong attention to details and the ability to make tough decisions. So um, sometimes within uh, quality, um, the decisions are maybe popular. Um, so as they might conflict with um, production and things like that. So um, that's why here like you have a quality, the quality department is a little bit different from everyone else because um, we have to make sure we stand true to our quality specs. 
Uh, just a little bit here. I have a few pictures, um, just some instrumentation and testing that we would have, we have in our quality lab. So on the left there is alkalizers and cell counters. So we have two alkalizers. Um, those will do alcohol, AE, color, and pH all at once um, on one sample. Um, we have two of those. We also have a, a cell counter and that'll tell us um, that's counting yeast cells. Um, so it's a, actually the same instrumentation that's used in hospitals, um, but we just calibrate it for our yeast cells. Uh, we also have uh, gas chromatography. So we actually have seven um, GCs in our lab um, doing various different, testing for various different components of the beer. Um, so um, quite extensive work done on those. Um, and we also have haze meters. So you're checking the haze of the beer. We have different titrations. So sometimes we'll do manual titrations depending on what it is. And we also have in there, you can see there with the red tubing, that would be an auto titrator that we would use um, for some of the titrations that are, are more frequent and we need to have done more timely. We also have a microbiology department um, or within the department. Um, we just have one microbiologist and they're testing micro throughout the entire process. We actually um, have very strict guidelines for micro, even though we do pasteurize. So there's no issues there. Our concern mostly with micro is beer spoilers is what we call them. So um, they can actually change and impact the flavor and taste of the beer. So obviously we would not want to have that uh, impacting our, our beer. So, um, so that's why micro is important to us, even though we pasteurize. So some of the rewards of occupation is um, technology, everything is always changing. We're always learning something new. I get in to be involved in all process areas of breweries, utilities, brewing, packaging, maintenance, and logistics. Quality is a part of all of those um, process areas. Um, so you definitely get to have an impact and, and get to learn and understand each of those areas. We also work in a very, because of those, um, all the different areas that we have, working in a very diverse workforce. Um, so a lot of different experiences, knowledge, backgrounds. Um, so, and you can always gain a lot um, from working in a diverse workforce. Of course, um, taste panel, we have taste panel every day. Um, I'm one of our key tasters and I also provide taste training um, to new employees. Um, or those who just want to learn who've been here for a while. Um, we'd also do a little bit of travel for audits. I would go to other breweries and audit and they, some of the managers might come here and do some audits for us. Um, might go for training and some conferences as well. So um, that's always a little bit of a bonus. Um, we also do innovations. I mean, we're always working on new brands. Last summer, um, we were working on two new global brands to be brewed here at the brewery. We were able to qualify for both of them. It's quite extensive to be able to qualify on new brands. And we also started making um, ready to drink. Um, so beyond beer beverages. So we're making like some um, Palm Bay's, um, Mike's hard lemonade, that kind of thing. So um, again, learning something new. So just kind of been doing that in the last few months. And there's always new technologies that we're needing to trial and approve um, and uh, make sure that they can work for our process. Um, and also new and unexpected events as we've all been adjusting in this past year. Um, I had to learn and make sanitize, hand sanitizer and um, train new employees on how to, on how to do that. So, and make sure that we are in compliance for um, all the quality rules for making hand sanitizer. So it's something I never thought I would actually be doing working in a brewery. So um, you just never know what you might have to have to learn. So um, some challenges of the occupation. Now um, I don't have a lot on this slide, um, but I always like to think that a lot of our challenges. Um, we turn them into uh, positives. There's always challenges every day. Um, something not working right. Um, 
or, or just a variation in the beer that we need to manage or in operations, that kind of thing. Um, so you, you never go without having regular challenges. The one thing that sets out the quality department um, from many of the others is that we're the only department that, up, that reports outside the brewery. And now that is because of um, our quality um, rules and regulations. So um, I do not directly report to the general manager of this brewery. So I would report to um, someone in St. Louis, actually what this where our um, zone headquarters are. Um, so it, it just creates that little bit of division so that if there is an issue that I don't have pressure from, from um, my direct boss, right, to conform to operations or production side. So that is a little bit different on the quality side than any other department here. Uh, getting into salary and benefits, I kind of tried to give some industry um, things. However, industry salary, I would say is about 75 to 95,000 a year. Benefits here um, at the brewery are very competitive. Obviously, we do have dental health, paramedical, um, co-pay with deductible on all of those. Um, uh, pension, we have a defined contribution, so a company matching program. I think that's a fairly common uh, pension system. Um, vacation is a standard three weeks to start, um, increasing as your years of service as you reach those milestones. And um, it is typically 40 plus hours a week. Um, we are very busy. Our production is pretty much 24 seven. Um, even our, our can line uh, just shuts down once a week for a very small window um, for maintenance and cleaning. Um, so it is a, it is a very um, heavy workload. Some of the educational requirements. So obviously we do require a university degree in science or a food related discipline. Um, five to 10 years of experience for my particular role is what they would um, ask for in a quality function uh, within food and beverage industry is preferred. A good understanding of brewing and packaging process. Technical and problem solving skills. Um, demonstrate a level of in data collection and analysis. Um, so what does it take to get here? Um, so my path, um, maybe there are a few different options, but I will talk about my path a little bit here. Um, I did go to uh, University of Saskatchewan and I got a degree majoring in chemistry. Um, I also went to Kelsey Syest and took a medical lab technology um, diploma. So, and from there, I got my um, first career job at Saskatchewan Research Council there on campus as well. And I worked there for only six months until I got a call asking me if I would be interested in working at that. And I just said, probably. Um, so anyway, from there, here I am 25 years later. So yes, I did get the job. and. Um, it, when I started here, I was working as a technician, a lab technician. So working on our, our what we call our kind of lab bench. Um, after a few years, um, got into what we call our specialist roles. Um, at that time, I did both brewing quality um, and microbiology as well. Um, so kind of rotated through those two. And um, I worked in those for probably, close to 10 years um, in that. And then they created a role also within that same um, level was a packaging quality specialist they added. So I took that role and I was in that role until um, I was awarded the quality manager position about, I've been in this role for about three and a half years. Um, so there are a lot of different avenues, but that is, that's how, I went in about it, and uh, but we do require a university degree um, to work in the lab. Um, and from here, where could I go? Um, obviously, I've, I'm very specialized in quality um, in my experience here at Labatt. Um, some places I could go would be to Director of Quality for Canada. Um, that role is out of St. Louis. That is my my. Direct report 
um, that I report to. Um, from there, there's also um, North America Zone Support Team for Brewing and Packaging. Um, often here at Labatt, they're uh, very open to um, crossing over into departments. So it's very often like, um, obviously, in, I've always been in quality. So um, I've had many managers um, come through this role before I took it. So, and there's very different backgrounds. So um, once you're kind of get your foot in the door here at Labatt, there's a lot of uh, different opportunities that allow you to experience um, a lot of different positions. Um, you could get into, like I said, the operations, packaging, you could be a line manager, uh, brewing. If you wanted to be a brewmaster, even from this role, I could go into being a brewmaster um, if I really wanted to um, and take some brewmaster courses. Um, so the sky is the limit here um, and whatever you're wanting to get into, um, it's all up to you. So um, that is a very nice uh, um, perk here at Labatt. So um, other areas of like, there's a lot of other breweries, microbreweries, um, which you could also transfer over these skills to or work in with this, with this education and experience. Um, like I mentioned before, there's also the opportunity to cross train in different departments and other maybe related jobs would be lab technicians, analytical or research labs, um, or other food and beverage companies as well. Work-life balance. Um, quality manager role can be obviously very demanding for your time at any time of day. I will take calls um, at night and on the weekends. Um, however, with that also comes some flexibility to manage your time at work. So. Um, if I really need to be flexible, I have that flexibility. Um, and there also is some opportunity to work from home. It's not the same as being in the brewery, but um, we all know that we've kind of adjusted here and learned that um, with our COVID situation that we've been able to, to do a lot of work from home as well. Okay, and I think that's all I had prepared. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Anyone out there? I guess Joelle, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, you know, I know you and I've talked. Can you just elaborate, like you know, leaving high school, um, you know, as a, you know, from Rosetown, Saskatchewan, when you did, did you, you know, did you, did you see this on the radar, or did you? No, actually, I, I wasn't even really on my radar to work at a brewery. Um, I didn't really think of them as. Um, with something for science, right? Um, but it actually, there, there is a lot of science involved in, in making, brewing beer and, and in testing it, right? So um, a lot of even my um, classes, my medical lab tech as well for the microbiology aspect um, really became very, very apl applicable for this position. Um, and actually, I think when we were talking, I hadn't, I didn't actually even, my two, my two career jobs that I've had um, post-secondary school is I didn't actually apply for either of them. Um, so the first one at Saskatchewan Research Council was a, a reference from someone I had uh, trained with at the university hospital. Um, and I was just offered the job right away. And for this job at Labatt, I was actually... Um, had applied at a headhunting company for an entirely different job. And with that, um, they just happened to see my, my resume and thought it would be applicable to this position here. So, so, so you so, never really know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it's, it, it, I guess maybe yeah. that's my point too, this the unpredictability of, of, a, of a career. Um, it's sometimes difficult to map it out when you're 17 and 18 and, and say, this is, this is where I'm gonna end up. Uh, for sure, yeah. It, it takes twists and turns and goes in all kinds of directions on you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else with questions? Yeah. Well, thank you very much uh, for the informative presentation. It was excellent. I noticed you said that the zone headquarters was in St. Mm -hmm. Louis. Was that correct? That is for the zone. Yes. We also have um, some offices and some people in Toronto. Okay. 
I just wondered, like my, I was, bo my boss just happens to be in St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. So I just wondered for the students out there, you know, that's uh, that expands it even more North America wide. I was, I was thinking it was more of a, like a Canadian company being the no. you know? Actually, and though that has been opening up more and more. Um, and actually, even within Labatt, the more mobile you are, the more options you have. So uh, we have a lot of um, new employees that come in and they're come here to Edmonton to work in a couple of positions, maybe a few years here as one role, and then they might go to the London Brewery um, or um, the Montreal Brewery or um, St. John's, Newfoundland, right? So you can, there is a lot of opportunity that way too, to move um, across the country. And we actually, our brewmaster um, who was here in Edmonton um, actually is now working in the Houston Brewery and um, Fort Collins, someone from Fort Collins is now our brewmaster. So, um, the, so that is starting to happen a lot more where we're going all over all over North America. So, um, so there are a lot of exciting opportunities if, if they want it for sure. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, thank you yeah. very much for the informative presentation. Very well done. Thank you. Yeah. And, and Joelle, I, and I think the one thing I, I take from, from this session and also from knowing you for a number of years is that sometimes we, you don't look at food and beverage industry is a science industry, but the quality control aspect of the development of new products, it's, and it, it certainly there's a lot of science involved in it. Yes, there is a lot of, a lot of science. Like one, one of the key focuses obviously for our, our lab and, and for my position is I need to make sure that I'm, I'm um, putting out quality, like accurate results. Right? So yeah. we actually have a very extensive program for calibration and running controls to make yes. sure that everything is in spec and that the results that we're producing are accurate. I guess, I guess it makes sense. We, I think as consumers, we yeah. forget to realize that every time we have a beer, you know, from a company, it needs to taste the same. <laughs> every time we have an Oreo cookie out of a package, it needs to taste and look the same. And that's you know, that, right. That's the right. company's so, idea. Right. So we want to, we want the Budweiser in Edmonton to taste the same as in St. Louis, as in Montreal yeah. or London or all that, right? Consumer so, knows what they're getting, yeah. 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 And so we do a lot of, there, it's actually a lot of emphasis on taste as well, right? So like I said, we have taste panel every day. Um, I'm tasting everything in process. So what, Our samples get sent to St. Louis. Um, now that we're making Stella and they, we send to Leuven every month as well. Um, all that stuff is there's a lot of focus on that. So you said earlier on about unpopular uh, um, decisions you have to make sometimes about production <laughs> that you stop production because the quality isn't good enough or something. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, production. So, <laughs> that's right. They don't. Yeah. They don't want to so see they, you a funny look on your face then going, "This isn't right." right. Yeah. yeah. I I don't know if I can walk out on the floor anymore without somebody asking me what's wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bad news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but that is it, right? They then but that's why we have the division, right? Is is so that um we're here to say no, this we have to stop for this, right? Yeah. Um whereas they meant, oh it's not that bad. Well, no, it is. So so is that uh, how, how common is that? I shouldn't maybe maybe I shouldn't ask that question. I don't want to um, I mean, well, no. <laughs> obviously well, kept, so. we, we have very tight limits on everything, whether it's the, um, from the packaging side, like the cartons themselves and the labels, the cans. Um, and so a lot of the quality stuff in, in that respect might be more kind of cosmetic or just um, yeah. may just influence uh, customers' opinion. Yeah, something like that. Whereas, uh, and then there's other ones where it's really not a tough decision at all. Is like whether there's a food safety issue, right? Oh, yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's entirely different. So we have those kinds of things too, or that it's just impacting the taste of the beer. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you kind of have different levels of of quality that yeah that could be so. 
Um, that's where you just need somebody to come in and say, no, that's not acceptable. Um, yeah. Which. That's your job. <laughs> impacts production, right? Yeah. So. Or yeah. maybe as the manager, you send one of your, your, uh, your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go tell them the bad news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, if there's no other questions, uh, I, I thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, I'll, I think I'll, I'll end it at that. And, uh, Thanks for doing this. It's uh, great to see you and uh, and future uh, this year who's uh, venturing out into the, uh, the the real world, I guess we yeah. want to say uh, as well. <laughs> and uh, one year old teachers used to say that all the time. It wasn't me, but one of, one of your yeah. former colleagues. But uh, but uh, as a parent, she's going through uh, kind of this right now uh, with this transition the son to uh, life after high school. So good luck yes. with that too. So, yes, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's it's been good. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye.